Now, you need to know how to show a genetic diagram for what we call a monohybrid cross. A monohybrid cross is when you breed two organisms together and look at one trait and, and, and what the resulting offspring will probably have. And you can, using genetic diagram, you can work out the probability of the phenotypes in the offspring. Remember that a man and a woman both have two alleles each and can pass either one to their offspring either via their sperm or their egg. Remember, they're gametes. So we can, add, we can show that in what we call a Punnett square. Let's work through an example and so you get the idea of how this works. So here's a question. A man and a woman both have brown eyes. What are the chances they will have a baby with blue eyes? Now, we need to show this in a particular format. This, you always want to lay out a, a cross in a particular format. Now, We've got a little bit more information in the question here, which is what we need. A man is heterozygous for brown eyes, and he mates with a woman who is also heterozygous for brown eyes. Remember what heterozygous means? It means one of each allele. What percentage of their children will have blue eyes? Well, let's have a look. The first thing to do is to write down their phenotypes. Brown crossed with brown. Then their genotypes. Well, they're heterozygous. That means one of each. So we have big B, little b, crossed with big B, little b. And we'd like to put those in circles because they're in a cell. But then we show that they split up into sperm and to eggs when they form gametes and that each one of those alleles will go into a separate sperm and a separate egg. So we split them up into separate circles now and the gametes are obviously big B little b for the father and big B little b for the mother. Now either one of each of those can be passed on. So we then draw a sort of noughts and crosses grid and we put the gametes into the grid as so. And then you just match them up. So the big B goes to the big B and then match the big B with the little b there and there and then the fourth one would be little b, little b. So those are the four possible outcomes that they could have in their offspring. Okay, so they could have one with big B, big B, two out of four would be big B, little b, and one out of uh, four would be little b, little b. How many of those actually make blue eyes? Well, blue eyes is recessive. You need to have little b, little b for blue eyes, so only one out of four. So there is a 25% chance that they will have blue eyes in the offspring. Remember, that is just a probability. Okay, that doesn't mean that if you have four children, definitely one will have blue eyes. You end up having 10 children and none of them end up with the blue eyes. But the chances are that one out of four, 25% would end up with blue eyes. Now there's some rules here. We've got to always use the same letter for the two alleles, um, but we always use the uppercase for the dominant and the lowercase for recessive. We talked about that. When you show breeding, you show a little cross to show you're crossing them together. We put the gametes and the genotypes in circles, and we always show all the possible outcomes and give answers as either a ratio, sort of one out of four, or a percentage. Now, there's a couple of practice questions you can have a go at here. So here we've got one about tongue rolling, and we're told that tongue rolling is dominant, so like that, whether you can roll your tongue or not. Some people can, some people can't, it's genetic. So a man is homozygous for tongue rolling, and a woman is heterozygous for tongue rolling, they have children. What percentage will not be able to roll their tongue? So a man, here we go, it's homozygous for tongue rolling. So he's a t they're both tongue rollers. That's their phenotype, their genotype. We're gonna use capital T uh, and he's homozygous. So he's got both big T's and she is heterozygous, we're told, the woman. And therefore we put them into gametes. We put them into our Punnett square and we match them up. And we can see there that 50% of them or two out, two out of the four are gonna be homozygous dominant tongue rollers and two out of the four are going to be heterozygous tongue rollers. So they're all going to be tongue rollers. So actually, 0% will not be able to roll their tongue. That's what the question was asking you to do. So I hope you got the hang of that there. Uh, there's another one here. Why not pause the video now and have a go at this one on a piece of paper and then play the video to see the answer. Okay, as already mentioned, it's not always the case that one allele is dominant over the other. Sometimes both alleles contribute to the phenotype. It's what we call co-dominant alleles. For example, snapdragon plants, the color of the flower is a, an example of co-dominance. So let's show a monohybrid cross for a co-dominant characteristic. So let's cross a red snapdragon plant with a white snapdragon plant. 
Now in this case, uh, the red is big R, big R, and the white is big W, big W, because they are both dominant, they're both gonna contribute. One is not recessive and one is not dominant. So when you cross these together, you end up with RW and RW for each of the four offspring. Now actually, if red was dominant, they'd all be red. If white was dominant, they'd all be white, but actually they all contribute. So what you end up with is all pink flowers in this case. So that's how co-dominance works.